one third, and how about many is interested in, the, in what, what's the benefit if you move to MariaDB? Okay, that's half and half. Okay, I'll try to have half and half. So, that's, this is what the talk is about. But first, a little bit of uh, kind of history and background. Um, so, in the beginning of my SQL, I actually created my SQL uh, uh, and I released it as a way to uh, meet more people and, and uh, if things were good, I hoped that I would get to travel more and see more of the world. So here is uh, this uh, me, we get my name to my SQL, um, and here we are in Madagascar, and this was the first time this guy saw a white uh, a blonde girl. Uh, one of the innovations we did that actually created a company where everybody is working from home, and uh, things were pretty good in the beginning of uh, MySQL when we started to build a community. We were accepted everywhere. We also had uh, a MaxDB uh, database that was come from SAP, and uh, that's my son Max. He's now 21, looks a little bit uh, di uh, different, but uh, st we all, uh, we st I still wanted to give him his name to something. And we also had a MySQL Max release w with MySQL with lots of extra features turned on. And we may some, someday also have a MariaDB Max version. Uh, when you get investors and the things, uh, some things go good, something go, goes bad, but most companies have some growing pains. Uh, then something happened that we didn't expect. We come into a strange company. And uh, some of us got a little bit scared what will happen next. But fortunately, uh, there is uh, somebody else who can continue, and that's Maria, my youngest. Uh, and uh, uh, the, what will happen with my school, at least with me, she, she started to travel, spent a couple of years in Latin America and the world. Now she actually is home in Finland back studying. But the question, the next generation, is it up to it? Here is only a few, few who has dared to change. It's a really hard job to take over success. MySQL is one of the most known trademark, trademarks uh, in the world and, and one of the really big ones in open source. It's a little like taking a rabbit out of a hat. I like this picture because before I started with uh, open source and programming, I thought that maybe I should be a magician. So. But we are quite confident that we can pull it off. By the way, I do kind of excuse myself for this picture, it had got, got me into trouble. This is not about promoting guns, uh, this is not US, uh, but uh, it's a more about question that showing confidence, and, and you can look at that face, she can take up anything. So I'm not allowed to show this picture in US because <laughs> I get into trouble. So, very brief my school history, I will go into some details uh, later, but the main thing is this is a really old project that started in 1881. The MySQL, uh, Axel Rhodes started to write MySQL on top of the old product in 93. We used it internally in 94, and 95 we uh, gave it out as open source. Uh, the first big agreement was with SAP. Um, then we had some backslash when Oracle, who said that MySQL is no threats whatsoever, we don't care about it, then suddenly they bought in a DB, which were the mo most important storage changes for us, just to stop us grow, which Larissa Ellison said. But it didn't stop us from getting sold to Sun for one billion, and uh, one, roughly one year later, uh, me and some others left to work on Maria, the storage engine, when, when, when Oracle started to acquire Sun, uh, then we started to focus on MariaDB because the Maria engine was re uh, meant to replace InnoDB because Sun was very afraid for Oracle. They wanted to have an alternative. MariaDB was supposed to be that. But uh, then it, uh, the question was that it was much more important to save MariaDB. We recently merged with uh, SkySQL and SkySQL is now in MariaDB Corporation just to leverage the MariaDB name. But uh, 
question. So why did we release MySQL as open source? Uh, before that, we had uh, me and David Axmar had used been using MySQL for uh, sorry open source for uh, free software for ten years. We always wanted to give something back. The problem with the open source community, which is actually a good thing, is that uh, if you want to give something out, um, you need to be able to maintain it because. Uh, there's so many open source products that are just giving out and then nobody's maintaining them and then they just die. And we did know that if you wanted to give something out, we actually have to find a business around it so that we can continue doing this and keep it alive. And by the way, these candies are, if there are any questions at any time, just ask and you and people around you will get some candies. So back then we had earned money basically doing software development consulting and uh, we concluded that if you take all this code that I've been developing for more than 10 years and give it out as open source, we will not lose any business. And I would say that uh, that is probably true for any uh, open source project, as long as you have a way to do dualizing or, or business source. And uh, in that case, you will lose nothing by giving it out. And we ch did choose uh, dualizing thing because we wanted to work full-time on MariaDB. We just didn't want to give it out and then do consulting on the side to be able to help the source, open source community. We actually wanted to do something good and get paid for that so we could continue doing even more good. Nowadays, I'm advocating business source for those companies who doesn't uh, or can't use dual licensing because they are not the infrastructure, infrastructure product. Dual, uh, dual license only works if you have something that you can embed. If you have an end user product, it doesn't work. Uh, you can read more about that on my blog. So the first uh, five years uh, with MySQL, we grew from two to uh, 15 persons. We did, but we were profitable after two months, which were, of course was easy, we were only two persons at the beginning. But we did grow organically, we spent a lot of time doing development and get the name out. And this is actually something I recommend people who want to do business on open source. First, prove your business. Because um, if you can prove it and you can actually get successful uh, so that you are profitable for a couple of years, investors, you don't have to search out investors, they will come to you. Uh, after three years, we had investors who started to call us and said that we want to invest. And um, in 99, we were offered 50 million dollars for MySQL. In that case, uh, back then, it was only basically me, Alan Larson, and David Axwark who owned the company. So that we, we would actually have got as much money, uh, if you look at the money worth back then, than we got in the end. But um, or, or, or if you had done that, we would never be able to let so many others also get a share of what we were able to do. So we spent five years developing until it, it was good enough. And um, then I, I kind of started to get tired. I did all the work to manage 15 persons, doing all the payrolls and everything else. So um, I want some, somebody hire more people to help me. And, um, uh, at the same time, we got more customer demanding more features that we could do, and people still were not paying that much for features, so we needed a sell, sales force. Up to, up to that time, we had no salespeople, no lawyers, nothing. So we had three uh, choices, grow slowly, uh, sell uh, the company, or take investment, actually uh, trying to compete with some of the biggest companies in the world. And it, we thought, actually, from the product point of view and the open source point of view, taking investment is probably the best thing. So uh, people ask me, so how did the, the sun deal happen? happen? It actually was the management who did, did the whole thing. I, I did, didn't get to know until basically one month before the deal, the deal was done. But, uh, but uh, we had a plan to make the company public. In other words, go to the stock market, uh, and we had all the internal plans was, was done according to that. I was much happier to see Sun buying us, because on going on stock market is, is a gamble, 
and I also was very afraid what uh, would happen internally with the product. Uh, some did understand open source, they did understand development, and they actually, uh, I believed, they were able to fix the internal problem we'd had in the company where we had a management team who actually wanted us to go more closed source and we had developers who wanted us to be more open source. So, this comes uh, then to MariaDB. So, Oracle bought uh, Sun with MySQL. They didn't give any firm promises of what will happen. Lots of the talent was leaving um, uh, Oracle. So, from my point of view, I had worked on this since 1981, so close, uh, um, close to 30 years, actually more than 30 years on this project. I didn't want it to die. When you really are in a project and you've worked on all your life and you have people around you working on it that you like, you really don't want to give it up. So I wanted the product to, to succeed. I also, also wanted to assure that there always be a free version of MySQL. As I said earlier, earlier in the keynote, uh, when you go out with open source, you basically do a promise that this is something you can trust. If I just would have let uh, MySQL die, I would personally felt I let a lot of people believe me in things that I couldn't hold up with. And I also really wanted these really talented people that worked with to have a good place. So I created Montepremi AB and hired all the key people. So we started from Sun. Uh, we shifted the uh, uh, focus from you doing the Maria Stories engine to, Maria, uh, to the MariaDB code. Uh, and the, the plan was that instead of like MySQL trying to keep everything internally, let's do this as a true open source product because um, with MySQL had, had got money that was both open source and commercial. Uh, with MariaDB, I just wanted to fix things so that I would keep up my promise to the world. So it was not about money. So I could do things totally different than I could do otherwise. So we continue with the virtual companies with no offices, but um, instead of trying to do support and everything else, we just focused on development, with technical companies. The companies were, was owned by the employees. So I didn't have any bigger share in the company than any other, other people. And it went uh, reasonably good until we merged with SkySQL in 2013. And uh, the reason for the merge was that, uh, um, actually I was part of funding SkySQL AB, and um, the reason was the merge that uh, do, during the first three years we didn't get any customers because um, uh, people uh, had bought big support contracts from Oracle for several years just before Oracle acquires Sun. Uh, to, to ensure that the Oracle couldn't increase prices. So when I went to Facebook, Google, and everybody else who was using um, MySQL, they said that, very good that you do with MariaDB, but you got money from Sun, uh, why should we pay you? If you're successful and you get MariaDB used everywhere, maybe we will use you, but we will not help you, which I thought was, was a little bit sad. So I put uh, four millions of my own money to uh, ensuring that MariaDB uh, would, um, would help would actually be able to survive. Um, and I didn't get that much of, uh, from, from the Sun money. So I actually put a, a large portion of money just to be able to keep my word to the open source community. But uh, no, when Montepremi AB is joined with, with SkySQL, I don't have to pay any more. And SkySQL investors, so things are actually pretty good from my point of view. They kind of secure that MariaDB will survive. So, SkySQL, they do support, they had the, no, they have the engineers, uh, the top engineers that ever worked on MySQL, all of them are working on MariaDB. So if you're concerned about uh, uh, should you switch to my, from MySQL to MariaDB, all the really, really good people are working on MariaDB. Haven't worked on MySQL for lots of years. So you have much better code base. If you ever trusted MySQL, you, you should trust MariaDB better. So no, uh, SkySQL is uh, the biggest driver of the MariaDB project. But uh, we have ensured that the server will always be um, free source. And that's why I created uh, the, the MariaDB Foundation. So I, I wanted to ensure that what happened to MySQL can never happen to MariaDB. So the foundations own the, the, 
the trademark of the server. And, uh, and that means that it, it's the foundation says that this is the official Maria di Berlis. So if uh, Oracle would buy uh, SkySQL or Maria di Corporation, not likely, but if they would do that, uh, the, the server will still always be open for community. They can't do like they did with MySQL, close it so that nobody from the outside Oracle can do commits. The foundation guarantees that anybody can work on the server on equal terms. So we, we work by doing reviews by the community, com, uh, community code. So if you have a patch for MariaDB, you just send it to us, we review it and help you get it in. We also maintain MariaDB.org and we now have uh, five people working on the uh, foundation and uh, we hope to have a new CEO start in December. So the, the members who actually make, made the uh, MariaDB project uh, possible by paying to the foundation is Booking.com, SkySQL, Parallels, Automatic and Cinemax. And I just got uh, uh, last week information that uh, Visma will be sponsored for next year. So these are the kind of who can actually help us do what we are doing. The thing is that you can't drive an open source project without sponsors. Funny enough, the MariaDB developers want to have paid, their wives insist that they want to have food on the table. So if you have a company who are actually moving to MariaDB and you are successful at doing a lot of money, please think, think about us and help us. Because we can't do this alone. So that was kind of the history talk. Questions? None, none, okay. I hope I'm not in the Italian only speaking room. Okay. So, what is MariaDB? And uh, it's a drop in replacement. Basically, means you can go from MySQL to MariaDB like that. We are uh, identical on uh, disk, on the wire, uh, on the protocol, and the APIs. So, all old MySQL clients, uh, language, anything just works with MariaDB. You don't have to do any changes. You can do changes to get uh, uh, use of the new features that we have. You don't have to. Everything we do is uh, public. Uh, we have lots of external contributors. Anybody can be part of the development. And we are guaranteed to always be open source. Uh, we have track record that we can do this. During five years, we have had five releases. Uh, the next one sh should hopefully be beta within a couple of weeks. And uh, we hope to have a gamma, basically means uh, pre-release in December. And we also have a, a multi-master version, which will be part of uh, MariaDB 10.1. So this is a mesh network. You can basically drop this anywhere, and the cluster um, updates itself. You can even have two clusters in different locations and, and replicate between those. So, quickly about the releases, because if you move to MariaDB, you don't only get the benefit of uh, the latest release, you also get the benefit of all the earlier releases. So, I will very quickly go through the features of all releases, the features that doesn't exist in MySQL. So, we have some hundred man years of more development on MariaDB than MySQL by the best people, and it kind of shows. So, but uh, first the releases. So, 5.1, that was uh, basically, we spent a lot of time just doing cleanups, doing build, adding community patches. 5.2, <clears throat> we took all the big features that has been in the MySQL ecosystem a long time, but never got into MySQL, because um, the last year, before we were bought in Sun, in Sun, especially in Oracle, MySQL didn't take any community features. So there were patches out there that should have been in, but, but wasn't. So we took those patches, cleaned them up, added those into uh, 5.2. And 5.3, uh, one or two years later, we added all the optimizer features that was missing in uh, MariaDB compared to other uh, SQL servers. And then we did uh, MariaDB, which basically uh, merged with MariaDB 5.3 and MySQL 5.5. Five. 
We also have a feedback plugin. So uh, if you go start using MariaDB, please put this in. And you just basically add one row to your my.conf. This will send us uh, send to MariaDB.org an anonymous packet with basically show status. And it will do that once a week. That will tell us what features you are using. Because now we have a team of 20 people working full time on MariaDB, but we don't know where should we put our resources. The feedback will, uh, plugin will tell, you, tell us which storage engine are using, which MariaDB ver versions are using, which features you are using, how many are using GIS and so on. So we know that uh, if nobody's using GIS, why should we put developers on it? And, uh, from the f and uh, you can look at the feedback information yourself. It's uh, over there. And uh, by t last time I looked, uh, some 50 people have enabled it. And for example, you can go in, into the statistics and see that about half already has moved to MariaDB 10.0. So 10.0 is pretty stable. And the reason that uh, you only have half is that there's so uh, many distributions who distribute 5.5. So the main features in uh, 5.2, uh, we have better uh, Sphinx. Anybody using Sphinx search? OK, one. So you're better off in MariaDB. We have a much better integration. We have very virtual columns, much better statistics. Uh, I will have a, a slide about that. Um, we have made it much easier for other st storage engines to work with MariaDB. And the blue, blue parts here means these are community patches that we have integrated. Uh, we also care about, about MyASM, even if it's not used by so many people, but there's still some people who use it just because it has so low footprint. So we added a community patch that gives you two and a half times speed up without doing any changes. With 5.3, we, uh, we had a full optimizer team. Everybody who had worked on the optimizer MySQL had moved to MariaDB, and they um, took the code from MySQL 6.0 that Oracle promised to release, which they never released. Uh, this team had worked uh, two or three years on that code. They took that code, ported that to MariaDB, added two more years of fixing things and improving things, and that basically MariaDB 5.3. So we have much faster subqueries. People have, as uh, before the uh, MariaDB 5.3 said that, uh, MariaDB and MySQL are good databases, but uh, you can't use them for real things just because subqueries are s s so slow. And I have heard that lots of that from Postgres people. No, we have uh, um, subquery optimization that matches or rivals almost any other database. We have much faster joins because we added uh, lots of new optimizations. Here are some of the subqueries that are significantly faster. As I said, the slides will be up afterwards. But basically, if there are subqueries that can be optimized easily, it's done. <coughs> we also added, a, a, we got some sponsors for doing microseconds. MySQL 5.6 has also, but we have a more complete implementation. So we added group commit between binary log and uh, the storage engine, which ma makes um, replication much faster. I have a slide about that. We also have progress reporting. So if you do an alt table from the command line client, you will get 10% done, 20% done, 30% done. Uh, so you can see how long things will take. So um, with 5.3, people actually started to switch to MariaDB. And this was probably the, um, the graph that made it. This is done by Mark Callahan from Facebook, who noticed that MySQL doesn't scale at all with replication. So how many of you MySQL users are using MySQL 5.5? Okay, and 5.6? Okay, there were much more MySQL users than just those. So MySQL 5.5 or earlier? Okay, somebody's sleeping, okay. <laughs> that doesn't make, didn't make sense. But anyway, if you are running MySQL 5.5 and running replication, 
basically you don't get any scaling at all. So Facebook complained about that, uh, so they tried to fix it. Uh, they added a fix for it, uh, and then they asked us, can we do something better? And this is how MariaDB scales. So you basically get uh, 5 10 x uh, speed up if you run an application uh, without doing any changes. So, and, and this is what you get with, uh, if you just take your old MySQL version, swap with MariaDB, it takes a couple of seconds, and you get this replication. No changes whatsoever, no options. Um, I would say that one of the reasons you see development of MySQL is because MariaDB. Because when Oracle saw this, um, that graph, they said, oh, will we fix this? And then they made some attempts on that, which failed, and they, then they copied our design. So in MySQL 5.5, you have, have something that scales a little bit better, but in uh, MariaDB 10.0, we did it even better. So we still have better scaling than, than, than MySQL. Actually, we have a more complete implementation. So I already had some, uh, some slides about NoSQL um, in the keynote, but uh, the main thing with the, uh, this slide is just, uh, personally, I don't believe that um, NoSQL is use, uh, useful for everything. You always need to combine that with um, SQL, just because you want to export to Excel or you want to do com more complex uh, reports. So that's why we have done some work in, in MySQL to make it easy to integrate uh, to, with other SQL, no SQL engines, and um, also done some, some operations like uh, adding handler codes so that we are basically at the same speed as no SQL. Uh, but the problem with SQL, it doesn't solve all problems. You can't do a web store because uh, you can't store a t-shirt and a computer uh, on the, in the same table. So we added something I call dyna dynamic columns, which is basically a very efficient way uh, to store many columns in, in, a, in a blob. And um, here's basically the functions I created. And uh, with this one, you basically get the same benefit as you get with MongoDB, and it, that if you use these for your dynamic columns, in other words, those columns that are different between T-shirt and computers, you can instantly add more columns that basically have different columns for every row in the table. You can, of course, also do that with JSON objects. But JSON is really, really slow and not very compact. So this is, this is both fast and with very, very little overhead. So, uh, Oracle uh, has changed MySQL from being uh, open source to an open core product because they added closed source features. One of the features is actually removed from earlier MySQL versions and, and only added to their enterprise edition. A little bit better, but still the same thing, was Trade Pool. And you have a problem with uh, scaling if you have lots of users. So this is the number of uh, clients. When you go over 128 clients who are doing questions at the same time, performance drops drastically. And the reason for that is that um, uh, the CPU will do nothing else than thread switching. And uh, all CPU basically goes to that. Uh, if you enable a thread pool, basically you just say, have an option, use, instead of using thread by connection, which is default, use pool of threads you get uh, per not perfect scaling, but almost perfect. So uh, there were some of them, people from, from SkySQL was at the Debian conference, and, and people asked, so what's the benefit for me if I move to MariaDB? Basically, they said, this, this one. And next day at the conference, a lot of people said, we moved to MariaDB and we got the 2x or 3x performance just by that option. And this is even if you have uh, uh, not using replication. So, MariaDB 10, actually I only have eight minutes, so I will, this is just to explain why are we not calling ourselves self MariaDB 5.6 and, and going to 10. The main reason is just that uh, some of the code in 5.6 is so bad that we don't want to take it. So what we're doing is that we, uh, we rename MySQL or 
named, renamed next version to 10.0, and now we're only taking code uh, that we believe is okay from MySQL, basically in a DB performance scheme and a few things, but we don't need the optimize, optimize uh, we don't need replication, we are already much better than MySQL, we'll probably ever have. But uh, we still make it uh, trivial to move from, from 5.6 or 5.7 to MariaDB. But we have different implementation behind it. So if you move to MariaDB, data on disk is still identical, communication wire is identical. Uh, we are trying to do, ensure that all SQL syntax and configure options are, are, if not identical, at least so that we can handle those. And basically you should still be able to move uh, to MariaDB within seconds. Actually, uh, the old replication code in MySQL 5.6 is so bad that you should not uh, enable global transaction ID or parallel application with uh, 5.6. They don't really work. We have uh, had uh, SkySQL who has support customers. We have lots of incidents when, when people have lost data with 5.6. We, we haven't had that with, with uh, MariaDB. So, with 10, which is the current stable uh, release, we took the most important changes for from 5.6, and then we took other things and, and re-implemented them totally, which is probably the most important one in global transaction ID and parallel application. So here are some of the new features. So the multi-source slave, I was actually the one who ported that from uh, from uh, Taobao patch to MariaDB. I, st I tried to do 50% of my time still doing development because I love that and I, the reason I'm holding talks is just I'm to have a problem saying no to people when they ask me, can you come and hold a talk? So, uh, um, we added uh, Cassandra as a storage engine just to prove that we can handle no SQL engines within MariaDB. Uh, the connect engine have a slide form. Spider gives you automatic sharding. So if you want have a problem that one server is not enough, you can either go with uh, a Galera, which helps in some cases, and or you can use Spider to shard your data. We added uh, roles for those who care about secu security. We have no as good GS support as, as uh, Postgres, so we can run all OpenStreetMap. Uh, Queries, we have engine independent statistics, which fixes some of the biggest problems we have in the optimizer. So global transaction ID, how many knows what, how, okay, let's do it easy. How, how many doesn't know what it is? Okay, so global transaction ID allows you to, to solve the biggest problem you have in MySQL replication. You have one master and you have two slaves, uh, or, or let's say with five slaves, then the master dies. Then the problem is that which slave should you promote to a master? That is usually easy because you can see where they are. But then you have to point the slaves uh, to, the, to, the, to the new master. And you couldn't really do that reliably with MySQL uh, 5.5 or earlier because uh, the sla slave had different position in the log than the master. By having global transaction ID, you can just say that go to this ID and it works. So this is trivial to promote slaves to master. And what we have unique compared to MySQL is that we guaranteed the slave will never have a state that the master doesn't have because we ensure that everything on the slave are run in exactly the same order uh, than um, on the master. MySQL doesn't have that. This is optional in MySQL 5.6, but that also makes MySQL 5.6 not 100% reliable in all cases. And our global transaction ID supports multi-source replication. Multi-source means that you can have uh, different masters here, and then you have one slave that takes data from all the masters, which is really nice if you want to have one server that takes a backup of everything, or you are doing, you're slicing your data and want to have one server that is, has everything. So we also added true parallel replication. In MySQL 5.6, you can only do things in parallel on the slave if uh, uh, things are in different databases. Um, 
in MariaDB, we can do parallel application even if you update the same table. You can even have different domains, which means that you can have, if you do one alta table that takes a long time on your master, you can say that this is running a different domain. And, uh, and that means on the slave, it will be running parallel compared to everything else. And uh, this is a, a slide by Kristen Nielsen, who did the parallel application that shows that you can get a, a 10x uh, speed up by doing this. But this doesn't work in all cases because uh, uh, it, it works by everything that is run on parallel on the, on the slave we, uh, is also run parallel, sorry, on the on master is going to run parallel on the slave. So, which basically means the slave uh, almost as uh, fast as the master. But in 10.0, uh, and actually this is, a, uh, this is still for 10.0. So, and this shows that uh, this is the number of the clients you have on the master. And this is the number of threads you have on the, on the slave. And this is when you, they are equally fast. So if you run with eight or more threads on the slave, the slave can keep up. And that basically this means that for the first time in MySQL history, we can actually keep up with the master. You don't get a, a, a big lag anymore. In 10.1 uh, that is coming out, uh, we fixed it that any uh, queries uh, can be run in parallel. Not only those that was running uh, um, on the master. It also allows us uh, to do, uh, ex for example, assuming that you have one master and you have only one client who doing lots of updates, then nothing is running in parallel on the master. On the slave, we can still run everything like that in parallel. So the slave becomes much faster than the master. That's a true parallel verification. We added Galera, the multi-master, as the standard feature. And did some uh, improvements from uh, WebSQL. Uh, we also added a uh, timeout for statements. We added a very nice uh, 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 syntax where you can set uh, um, variables before running a query. And, for that, and that's basically uh, how to use this one. We have compound uh, statements which come from, from the community. So we have, with the uh, 10 zeros, we have added lots of nice features, but the main one is basic parallel replication and, and, uh, and uh, global transaction ID, and also that we also did a lot of optimization for, for provide for IBM. So there's lots of things planned for future versions of MariaDB. I will not go th through those in details, just to show that this is the, the code in Jira. Most of these uh, uh, things are actually pretty easy to implement, but we need help from the community to do that. So we have plans, we have, uh, if somebody asks hey, uh, or tells us, uh, could I uh, do this, for example, UDF returning arrays? Uh, we will tell you exactly how to do that and we will help you implement that if you so, so want to do that. Lots of things to do but we can do everything. So we have uh, 20 developers who are trying to help users running in, into problems and do development but uh, we need also to be able to compete with the big guys at, at uh, Microsoft um, and Oracle who has uh, thousands of, of engineers on the database. It's quite amazing that with MySQL we'll be able to compete quite successfully in a big, in many areas with just 20 people. But to be able to do even more, we need help. So there's lots of things that you, uh, you can help us with, but the main thing that you can do is that we only had a couple of MariaDB users here. Um, when you go to MariaDB, uh, and you move to it and you see it's successful, it will be successful, please blog about it so that you can spread the word. Because uh, um, currently there is no reason whatsoever to use MySQL anymore. MariaDB be better in all cases. More secure, more features and faster. 
So, and we also have LGPL libraries to uh, allow people uh, having commercial closed source applications linked with our, our libraries. And then you can uh, distribute MySQL or MariaDB together with your application without having to pay licenses under many cases. We also added TokuDB, which is a storage engine that is it's the only one seen who can actually compete with InnoDB in complexity and speed. And especially when it comes to uh, inserting data, it's much faster than InnoDB. The Connect Storage Engine allows you to do amazing things uh, by connecting to lots of different formats, but also ODBC. So you can actually do a join with uh, no in MariaDB uh, to Oracle, Postgres, and Cassandra and, and MariaDB table in the same query, which is pretty amazing. So, so I don't uh, have time to actually go to the challenges of forking and, act and uh, actually how we did it to uh, take over my, um, uh, my SQL with MariaDB. But um, we have full documentation of, of every feature we ever done, uh, written largely by either me or some other developers or MariaDB. And, and we have a, one person, MariaDB Foundation, who works on that one. But most things is that there's lots of people involved, involved with MariaDB. It's not only MariaDB Foundation and MariaDB Corporation. We have an active project. And this is actually the most important thing. When you are choosing an open source project, you need to see how many are using it, are it alive, uh, are people actually working on it. And here's some statistics just for one month where we have lots of branches, lots of commits. And uh, I would assume that we have about around 2 million users or installations of MariaDB now. And uh, this one uh, showed that uh, already on the keynote. Also that everybody is more or less moving to MariaDB. Apparently not here in Italy yet. Hopefully this talk will help you. Um, so. There's no, as I said, there's no reason whatsoever to run MySQL. Uh, and there's, but there's lots compared to MariaDB. I still think and I'm happy that I'll be able to contribute something to the LAMP stack. And I'm still doing that. And, and people who think that I am, have a way to foresee the future can think about uh, that. Um, how was I uh, able to? think about the future and actually choosing for my, my youngest daughter another name that starts with M so we can continue having a lamp stack. And uh, summer about being my school successful. It was not just that we had be best technology, but we actually worked closely with the community. I wrote some 30,000 emails myself just helping people. And I think that that was a big part of creating my school. And we are doing exactly the same thing now with MariaDB. Uh, and last, I want to thank those companies who actually made MariaDB successful. Oracle, we still get a lots of good, good patches, especially on InnoDB from Oracle. I'm very, very, very happy for their support. Sky School or MariaDB Corporation, they are now employing 20 people, helping you all that you can benefit for free. The foundation which I work on, we are helping the community, be part of the development of MariaDB. We have the Connect engine done by a guy, Oliver Bertrand, in, Fran in uh, France, Spider by Kentoku in Japan, um, Lik Sun Peng, who did the uh, first version of multisource. Google is actually committing no encrypted tables to MariaDB 10.1, and we just know reviewing the code. So that's it. I will look at four minutes over. So sorry for that. Questions? The candies are very good to ask.
Yeah, I can have already answered that one. So the problem with SQL is actually the language is quite extensive. Uh, uh, extensive and you lose 20% uh, performance by having to parse. Uh, with the hand, if, you have, if you're just doing like you do with Mongo, just fetching one row, the hand, handler statements basically do that. You open a table and then you just say, fetch this row with this key. This is as fast as uh, you have in, in the NoSQL. You can use handler socket, which, is a, which, which, which have its own protocol, so you have to link with your own client, and then you get, uh, uh, I think, 20% more performance than with, 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 with handler socket. But of course, you can also use prepared statements, and we are doing more work with prepared statements, because then, then you do the parsing only once. It doesn't really work good if you do a new, if you do one question and then you, uh, and then you prepare it, do a query, and then you end it. It doesn't work because then you actually have three packets instead of one. But if you're going to do a lot of those, you get some benefits. So. Yeah? Uh, you mean uh, the, the, um, um, the merge table or uh, partition table? But basically, the, the cache solves the. We had a bug or design feature uh, because this was code that actually wrote uh, 25 years ago when you didn't have uh, multi threads. We only had one mutex on it. And what we did uh, f for the cache, you can split it to, to many sub caches, in which case you only need to take one of the mutexes. So if you, uh, you split it into 16 caches, you basically get 16 times more performance. So it's, it solves the problem with the cache. It doesn't solve the problem if you need to go to the disk. But in, in many cases, at least, that was done by Stardoll, one Finnish company, uh, and uh, they got enough performance that they didn't need to split anything. So. More questions? There. Okay, that's easy. I don't have to throw it so far. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a question on um, uh, on the Buddhist keynote, uh, you said that uh, in uh, two years, according to you, in two years, uh, uh, MySQL would be dead. Uh, uh, not uh, dead, but uh, let's say from distributions, it, it's, let's say, it's dying. Uh, and, uh, and that's basically only because of distributions. And that's uh, we have a slide for that. Actually, sorry, it was. No, sorry. It was basically the, the graphs. And, and this was something that the 451 group said. No, I don't find it. Uh, so they estimate that by, by end of next year, 50% of all users will run MariaDB. But that's just because. Uh, it, most of the users of the database are those who are actually using in the background or the desktop. They don't know what they're using. All of those will automatically be upgraded with MariaDB uh, for most of the distribution. It's only DB and Ubuntu who doesn't automatically upgrade to MariaDB. So that, that, that will uh, change things. The other thing is, is that if everybody is using MariaDB by default, why would you ever go to MySQL.com when you just can do a packet upgrade? But uh, my job is, of course, to ensure that enlightened people, developers like, like you, actually know why you should, you should switch. So I'm traveling under a word, a word holding 40 talks a year, and then uh, just talking about why you should switch, switch to MariaDB. It takes a lot, lot of time from my development, but I think it's important uh, that, that you know that there is a future. You don't have to go from MySQL to some or the database, uh, just because you're afraid of, will MySQL exist? I have seen companies who were <laughs> moving to a SQL server just because they were afraid, afraid of Oracle with MySQL. I think that's too stupid. With MariaDB, there's uh, no choice of where to go. And we are trying to ensure that anything that uh, Oracle is doing, we are doing better. And we are actually working with the community, and you can help me do that better. Oracle can do that. So the more of the 
uh, big companies like Google, the way we get on, Google is already on MariaDB. So the more the big companies who actually are working with us, the less reason there is for MySQL existence. Yeah. They still can this. <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah. How the first? Do you mean my school or no? Any of the teams you work with? Teams. How diverse are the teams? As in, you know, gender, mm. yeah. ethnicity. How diverse are the teams? Okay, I just sorry, I don't understand the question. The, it basically, look around. You. Yeah, yeah. It's a white male world for a Yeah. So I'm asking you how diverse the teams are at uh, Maria DB and my school. How the teams are? You mean uh, how how? Uh, do you mean how the teams are built up? We, we, yeah. Absolutely, people. Uh, the people. So on uh, MySQL, most we had um, we always hired people from the net uh, and seen people who are active. Actually, when I hired people, I didn't know the gender yeah. at all. Really? Uh, but uh, in the in the end result uh, on MySQL, we had one female developer uh, of uh, of twenty. But we had then lots of people of uh, females in support. So we, and in, in um, uh, Maria DB Corporation, we have one amazing person, uh, female working in QA, and lots of great people working on, on on the server. But we haven't found many female developers. If that was the question. And in the first first teams, I mean uh, the. Currently, we are in a, among the developers of male-driven society. Unfortunately, things are changing, but with the, we are trying to hire those that are active in open source. And there's not, not that many females that are really active in that way, unfortunately. Yeah, I hope it changes. And I'm actually uh, have a whole sessions of trying to promote people uh, Females to be more active in programming. Thank you. Uh, sorry. <laughs> so, one more question before I get thrown out. Okay. G GIS, yes. Yeah. Uh, do you just support open uh, queries? Or do you no, we, 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 uh, according to the developer, we support you know, the full core, core queries of uh, GIS, which is uh, more than Postgres supports, according to him. I, I, in this case, I'm, I'm not sure. But basically, yeah. it's not complete, but uh, we have one person who has worked uh, three years just on GIS. So we, we are doing a lot of things there, even if we haven't seen so much uptake of it. But he's very interested and, and, uh, in doing that, and we let him do that, because I, I think that's uh, an important area. And uh, the benchmark we, we have been since have, have been very good. So we are ha happy with his work. So after that, you can come and take, take some more. But. Um, at 6.30, there will be a party, so I will be here with black, black vodka, so. OK, there's. Which, which uh, API? Could we have any compatibility problem with software like Texas API, like GDBC, or? With, with MariaDB. With MariaDB. Compared to MySQL, none. We are identical on the wire. 100% identical. Except we have extended the protocol, but when I wrote the protocol, I wrote it in such a way that uh, when you go, when the server or client connects to the server, it tells, this is what I can do. The server answers, this is what I can do, and then they ask. So it's very easy to extend it. 
So we actually extended the protocol with things like progress supporting Azure I.O. But it's still 100% compatible from any MySQL client. So there's no problem whatsoever. It's trivial to take uh, out MariaDB. Uh, we just put uh, out MySQL with MariaDB instead, run MySQL upgrade. We just uh, change it basically your permissions table and then you are done because we have much more fields because of roles and stuff like that. Uh, but from the client's point, you have to do nothing. The client can check if you're running with MariaDB and then uh, they can use all the new features if, they, if it wants to. So you can easily do a code that works both in MySQL and MariaDB. But anything that works for MySQL works with MariaDB. So we had uh, some, a couple of MariaDB users here. Uh, when you moved from MySQL to MariaDB, did you have any problem whatsoever? Yeah, and so far I have done that on the, this, the last three years, uh, 100 conferences, asked that question. Not a single one had a problem, not one. Or then they haven't understood what I, what I said, either one. But still, I think we have done a reasonable good job in creating MariaDB, and we are continuing with it. Because it's not about, only about uh, uh, money is a question about passion and doing the right thing. And, do, uh, and I love the fact that you can do, do a business where, where you have one in a thousand paying and you are at the, at the same time helping 999. And I plan to continue with this as much as long as I can. But I do need help uh, as any open source project does. So that if you see something missing in MariaDB, or you find any of these features interesting uh, that you can find uh, on our web pages or on the conference web pages, please consider to be a developer and help us. Or if you can't do that, go to your rich company and tell them to be a member in the foundation. That also helps. Okay, thank you.